Common Core is described by corestandards.org as a set of clear college and career ready standards designed to ensure that students graduating from high school are prepared to take credit bearing introductory courses in college programs or into the workforce. This sounds like a worthy initiative offering a consistent measuring stick with which to accurately assess the academic state of the nation's youth. Yet there are many opponents who disagree with its implementation entirely. And uh, they're good. I mean, this week is testing week at schools. So. I hear a lot about yeah. that. Yep. Yeah. So they're th three days of extensive standardized testing. Mm -hmm. And, and do you, what are the consequences of the standardized testing? Well, the way I understand it, if the uh, school's kids don't test well, they burn the school down. <laughs> so... This video aims to take a look at the basic history and the pros and cons of Common Core standards in order to help students, teachers, and the general public understand the principles behind them. First, a basic history. In 1983, a report titled A Nation at Risk was published by President Ronald Reagan's National Commission on Excellence in Education. We found that our educational system is in the grip of a crisis caused by low standards, lack of purpose, ineffective use of resources, and a failure to challenge students to push performance to the boundaries of individual ability. In its opening remarks, the report stated, Our society and its educational institutions seem to have lost sight of the basic purpose of schooling and of the high expectations and disciplined effort needed to attain them. This report, the result of 18 months of study, seeks to generate reform of our educational system in fundamental ways. The report continued to paint a grim picture of the state of education in the early 80s. George H. Bush and the governors of the nation convened in 1989 at the National Education Summit to address the specific concerns therein. In 1991, the Secretary of Labor issued a Secretary's Commission on Achieving Necessary Skills. The Commission's fundamental purpose, as quoted in the report, was to encourage a high-performance economy characterized by high-skill, high-wage employment. Basically, they were trying to ensure that high school graduates had the necessary skills to succeed in the workforce. The report went on to say, The primary objective is to help teachers understand how curriculum and instruction must change to enable students to develop those high-performance skills needed to succeed in the high-performance workplace. In 1992, the National Council on Education Standards and Testing issued a report detailing methods to implement national testing standards. A company called RAND Corporation criticized the report before Congress, claiming the NCEST report holds out a false and even dangerous promise. The Council gave insufficient attention to the validity, fairness, feasibility, and cost. NCEST was dissolved shortly thereafter. In 1994, President Bill Clinton signed the Goals 2000 Educate America Act, which aimed to improve learning and teaching by providing a national framework for education reform. The act set a series of national education goals to be met by the year 2000. However, in the year 2002, No Child Left Behind was signed into law by President George W. Bush. Essentially, the law required states to test students in reading and math grades 3 through 8 and once in high school. Then, in 2008, Janet Napolitano, serving as chair of the National Governors Association, came to the conclusion that America couldn't lead the world in innovation and remain being competitive if we didn't have an internationally competitive education system. Napolitano created a task force which then released a report that became the building blocks of the Common Core state standards currently being used by 42 states and the District of Columbia. Clearly, the history of standards in education has been rocky. Many acts and laws have been passed to try and develop national standards to which all the nation's school can adhere. Now that most states have adopted Common Core, however, a comparison of the pros and cons is necessary to help us understand the effectiveness of its implementation. Common Core has always been about providing an accurate, measurable benchmark to be used to compare U.S. kids with other countries. It largely succeeds. While the results might not always be favorable, the standards are clear and they let the U.S. education system know where it stands in relation to the rest of the world. Professional development for teachers will improve due to the fact that they will all be teaching the same standards. Common Core covers only English, language, arts, and math, leaving states to develop their own standards in other areas. Money will be saved on testing and scoring. Any student who moves from state to state will not be negatively impacted by differences in their schoolwork. The standards they learn will be the same in every state. Tests are meant to accurately measure a student's understanding of the specified standards. Cons. Because Common Core is still relatively new, there are many kinks to work out. Data takes time to gather and process. Test questions are horribly written. In an article called, Could You Answer These Common Core Test Questions?, the author shares various examples of Common Core test prep questions and shows how said questions are often worded in unfair, tricky ways. 
the stress to perform on standardized tests is only going to rise. At a time when many parents are opting out of Common Core, the perception of teaching to the test needs to change. Too much emphasis on standardized tests. Academic rigor fueled by teachers under pressure to perform is causing higher thinking skills to begin at an earlier age, all the way to the kindergarten level. Vocal critics have expressed downright outrage at Common Core's perceived effects on kids. In a lengthy Twitter rant, comedian Louis C.K. spoke about his daughter's elementary school, saying the teachers are great, but it's changed in recent years. It's all about these tests. It feels like a dark time. He even slammed Common Core on David Letterman. The debate can go on and on, but if one were to look only at the facts, Common Core is quite easy to understand. The government wants to make sure kids across the nation are all on the same page, learning the same education. The basic idea makes a lot of sense. Why should kids in the United States not be held accountable to the same set of standards? How else would we measure the effectiveness of our education system compared to the rest of the world? However, because Common Core is so new, there are bound to be hiccups. Yes, the tests are poorly written. Yes, the ELA lessons are super boring. Yes, the kids are using number lines to solve math problems, something that most parents don't know how to do. And yes, many teachers find themselves teaching to the test in hopes that the test scores of their students improve. In fact, a commentator on a PBS article talking in 2015 about the grades of the most recent round of Common Core tests said, tests have long been the subject of heated debate, especially those tied to the new and more ambitious Common Core standards. This fall, results are coming in for the first time and in many places they have been disappointing. These complaints and comments about Common Core are simply the result of not enough data being collected. The basic idea behind Common Core is logical and could eventually be great for the country. Common Core just needs some time to fully develop. The lessons will get better, the tests will get better, and classroom instruction and student engagement will get better.